Hi scholars, today we're going to look at Teak 4.4a. It says I can add and subtract whole numbers and decimals to the hundredths place using the standard algorithm. So in this particular video, I'm going to focus only on adding and subtracting decimals to the hundredths place using the standard algorithm. So let's get started. So here are the three steps to adding and subtracting decimals. The first step is to line up your decimals. So like if they're adding, asking you to add you know 1.3 plus 2.6 you know you would line them up on top of each other the second step is go ahead and write the decimal in your answer where it's going to be and then the third step is to just add and subtract like it's whole numbers so let's go over some examples so suppose you get like 4.7 plus 3.5 so your first step is to stack them and line them up so when you add, you want to write them up and down. So your key thing is to make sure those decimals are on top of each other. And then go ahead and write your decimal in the answer. Okay, then you're going to go ahead and add. So 7 plus 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Add like normal numbers. Four plus, 3 plus 4 plus 1 equals 8. So your answer is 8.2. So let's look at another example, 2.9 plus 3.6. So write them on top of each other where the decimals are lined up. And go ahead and put your decimal in your answer. Then go ahead and add 9 plus 6 is 15. Carry the 1. 3 plus 2 plus 1 equals 6. My answer is 6.5 or 6 and 5 tenths. So let's look at another example, 4.8 plus 0.2. So you're going to write your 4.8, and again, your rule is to line up the decimals. So these need to be on top of each other, and go ahead and put your decimal there. Even though there's nothing here, that's okay. It's like saying you have zero ones, you know. So, you know, sometimes you might add, like, let's say 48 plus 7. You know, it's just like saying you don't have anything in the tens place. So this is nothing, anything, this is nothing different. So... 4.8 plus 2, or 0.2, so that equals 10, carry the 1, 4 plus 1 is 5. So if you look at this, it's 5.0 or 5. And I've talked about in my other video that when you have 5, it's like having $5. So, you know, it can be written like this or like that, or 5.0. Okay, let's go over this example. 0.3 plus 6.1. Same thing, decimal, decimal, decimal. 3 plus 1 is 4. Nothing plus 6 equals 6.4. Okay, let's look at this. 3.05 plus 4.62. So again, line up those decimals. And then add up. 5 plus 2 is 7. 0 plus 6 is 6. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7.67. 7. So, so far, everything we've been adding has worked out. It's been pretty easy. But now let's lo look at this one. This one's a little weird. 2.9 plus 1.06. Remember, you've got to line up the decimals. A lot of people end up doing this. You can't do that because that's adding tenths to hundredths, tenths to ones, and then ones to tens. And so you can't do that. So make sure you line up your decimals. Now this is going to be weird because, you know, over here there is no hundredths place. So it's okay to put a zero there because you're saying you have zero hundredths. So now you're able to add zero plus six is six, nine plus zero is nine, two plus one is three. So then the answer is 3.96. Let's look at one more. 5.17. Go ahead and put the decimals where they belong. 6.3. 
So in this situation, this one doesn't have any hundredths, so you just put a zero. So seven plus zero is seven, one plus three is four, six plus five is 11. So 11 and 47 hundredths. Let's look at something a little bit more complex. 2.3 plus 6 plus 0 0.05. So in this situation, you have 2.3. You want to go ahead and put decimals where they belong. Okay, this one here is 6. That's like saying 6 whole or $6. So that actually goes over here. So I have 6 whole and 0 tenths. Then I have 5 hundredths. So 0 0.05. Now notice this kind of, you know, even let's not even put that there yet. This kind of sets everything off. So you have to fill in zeros to balance it all out so you can properly add everything. So this equals 5, 3, and 8. 8 and 35 hundredths is my answer. A lot of times people will do 2.3 plus 6 plus 0 0.05. And then, you know, they just do that kind of addition, and then they're like, well, wait, where does the decimal go? This, you cannot do this. The main rule is line up those decimals. Okay, let's look at this one. 5 plus 0 0.09 plus 1.3. So go ahead and just put your decimals. And now look at this. This is 5, so it's like $5.00. 0 0.09, 1.3, fill in your spots, so 9, 3, 6. Okay, I want you to do these six problems on notebook paper. Remember to line up your decimals first and then fill in zeros anywhere needed and then, um, and then add or, and then just add. So press pause and then press play when you're ready to check. So I went ahead and solved all of these. Here is what they all look like with the decimals properly lined up and with all the zeros filled in. So you can press pause to continue looking. Um, I'm going to move on to subtraction now. The rules for subtraction are exactly the same. You line up the decimals. So if I have 0.5 and I'm doing minus 0.2, Line them up, put your decimal right there, you have 0.3 as your answer. If I have 0.9 minus 0.6, I have 0.3 as my answer. Okay, so 1.2 minus 0.5. Okay, line them up, go ahead and set your decimal down. Now remember, you can't do 2 minus 5, so you have to borrow, so that becomes a zero, and that becomes a 12. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. Point 7 is my answer. Remember the rules for subtraction still apply, that if you can't take away, you have to borrow. So let's look at this one. 8.4 minus 2.09. My decimal is going to go right there. So notice there's a blank spot here. This is where putting the zero is even more important because like in addition sometimes you can kind of just ignore it but in subtraction you have to put the zero because look I can't do zero minus nine or nine minus zero so I have to borrow so that becomes a ten that becomes a three so ten minus nine equals one three minus zero equals three I didn't have to borrow from the eight to make that work so that stays where it is eight minus two is six Okay, 7.31 minus 2.9. Okay, fill it in. Now in this situation it's easy, 1 minus 0 is 1. But then I can't do 3 minus 9, I have to borrow from the 7, so that becomes a 6. So that'll become 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Remember to keep your decimal there, 6 minus 2 equals 4. Here's a little bit of a crazy one, 3 minus 0.25. So remember, your 3 is like 3.0, 0, and then you have your 0.25. 3 is like $3. Okay, now do you see why it's really important to put the zeros? Because I can't do this minus this, I can't do this minus this, so we're going to be borrowing a lot. 
So in order to borrow from this one, this one needs to borrow from this one. So that one's going to become a 2. That can become a 10. But then that one's going to borrow from that one, so that'll become a 9. So then that can become a 10. So 10 minus 5 is 5. 9 minus 2 is 7. 2 minus nothing equals 2. Think of it this way. It's like $3 minus 25 cents. Well, $2.75 plus 25 cents equals $3. Here's another one, 4.1.08, decimal over there, put a zero here, 10, that becomes a zero, 10 minus 8 is 2, 0 minus 0 is 0, 4. Last one and then we're going to do checkpoint, so 7 minus 3.16, so I know 3.16 goes there, now the 7, it's like $7. 7 whole. So 10, 10, 6, that gets borrowed from, so that's going to be 9. So 10 minus 6 is 4, 9 minus 1 is 8, 6 minus 3 is 3. Okay, it's time for checkpoint. I want you to solve all these problems on notebook paper. Press pause, solve, press play when you're ready to check. Here are the answers. I went ahead and wrote them out up and down with the decimals lined up and zeros put in where they belong. So you can press pause and continue to look. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start my next video. I hope you have a better understanding of adding and subtracting decimals.